Hi, this is Dr. Mark Sell from the YouTube channel Therapy for the Heart. This is the 83rd talk on this YouTube channel. And uh, last time we addressed loneliness and how it uh, was a predictor of uh, health, de decline in health and also death. And tonight I'm going to talk about Dixon Shibanda. Dixon Shibanda was a psychiatrist, is a psychiatrist from Africa, Zimbabwe. And um, the title is Dixon Shibanda and his army of grandmothers combat depression. I like that, combat and an army, because that's what he developed, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about right now. So, he was uh, one of 12 uh, psychiatrists in, in Zimbabwe, covering 14 million people. 14 million, an impossible task. So, to give, give an example of the impossibility of that, he received a phone call from a place where one of his patients was hospitalized for overdosing, and he had a phone consult with them and uh, to try to see what they were gonna do uh, with her, and part of that treatment plan was to release her uh, and uh, refer her back to Dr. Shibanda. And uh, so a week went by, two weeks went by, three weeks went by. And he got a phone call from the mother, and the mother said that her daughter committed suicide. She hung herself from a mango tree. And he said, well, what prevented you from coming with your daughter to see me? And she said, we, we didn't have the $15 for the bus trip. $15. $15 is a lot for many people who are low, low income or no income, but she didn't have it. So that, he said, he thought a lot about that. He said, this is not gonna work. This is not gonna work. So giving it a lot of thought, he thought about grandmothers. Why grandmothers? That was very interesting because brilliant, brilliant thought of his because grandmothers are not going anywhere. They're gonna stay in the community. They're not like some doctor who moves into the community, gets some satisfaction of his work, and then moves away for greener pastures, more income, or a different lifestyle. They're not going anywhere. So that's great. So we decided to train grandmothers and uh, with CBT therapy, talk therapy. Yeah, so we trained them and uh, they would meet and at a place called the Friendship Bench. They would meet and talk. And uh, so I'll give you an example of one of the patients who came to talk to them, to Grandmother Jack. Uh, this patient, um, Farai. Farai was 22 years old. And uh, she uh, brought an envelope to uh, Grandmother Jack. Grandmother Jack, by the way, treated 275 people in her lifetime, 275 people. But there was grandma, Grandmother Jack with Farai, and Farai was 22 years old. And she read the envelope, uh, and then she looked at her and she says, I'm here for you. That was a very, very good intervention because it was a solidity, she had the confidence, I'm gonna be here for you. So this person was HIV positive. Her husband left. They had two younger children, two younger children, and the woman had, un, had no work. And she thought about killing herself and the children. So grandmother Jack said to her, you've been through a lot. And when she said that, it reminded me of this uh, uh, story I told on the video about the eight-month-old infant and the, he's autistic and his mother. And the intervention, I'm rocking and rolling here, the intervention was um, uh, looking at the mother and the son, eight-month-old, the son was in the crib. And she said to, the, she said to both of them, you both had a very difficult delivery. You both had a very difficult delivery and with that, this, the mother started to cry, and the son looks over at her, and the son tries, tries to start to, started to cry, and they, they were connected. They never were connected. They were connected with 
the emotional resonance that the mother had mm -hmm. about feeling understood. Probably no one said that to her. You have had a very difficult delivery. Maybe the focus is always on the son, who knows, but uh, so that was for Grandmother Jack's, uh, you see, you've been through a lot. That's what that reminded me of. It's very important for her to be able to say that to people. It resonates. So, so she listened to her story for a while, and uh, at one point she looked at her and she said, you know, you have kufungisa, kufungisa, kufungisa. And the woman looked at her and she started to, 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 to cry a lot, like the floodgates were opened. And because she felt understood and what that word meant was that you've been thinking too much and thinking too much is equivalent to depression. So she felt understood. She wasn't alone. She was among um, a group of many people who have that same affliction and malady. Thinking too much equals depression. So she put a name to it. Like I said before, a name has a lot of meaning because it means that you are part of a group, not just alone. And uh, it's reassuring to identify your malady. So, Dixon, I can call Dixon, Dixon, because we've been in communication a few times on, 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 on Twitter. So, and uh, I also I wrote him a letter, an email rather, explaining who I was, so I think I caught up to him too. So, so he, more than 30,000 people in 70 communities have received treatment through the Friendship Bench. 30,000 people in 70 communities in Zimbabwe. What amazing, amazing numbers. And you know what about those numbers? In six months, none of them had a relapse of symptoms. None. They did better work than doctors. So, kudos to you. What an amazing job. And I think it, it, it leaves us to think about what kind of job we could do, what kind of job we could do with ourselves, with our friends, make our own French bench, friendships bench, friendship bench. And, and, and we know community people who are suffering. We know, or we, we, may, we could get to know people who are, you know, the, the homebound elderly are a group underserved and nobody knows, they don't have a voice. It's like Maria I talked about who I uh, met and she was an uh, alcoholic but nobody knew it and, uh, and no, so no, they couldn't treat her. They were treating her for depression. She, wasn't, she was depressed but she was, she was an alcoholic so, and she was also given um, Percocet and that could kill you, you know, with uh, drinking. So the doctor didn't know that so I called the doctor right up and uh, I, he came over and took it away of course. You know, he, he's treating her for depression, not alcoholism. So I was the expert in that. And I worked with her, and and from for, for a few years, and uh, and uh, I treated her, and, uh, and for, she she went from living in or sleeping in the urine wet wet beds to uh, uh, bed sheets to uh, to getting up to getting into a wheelchair and, and getting out of the house in the first time for two years. Two years she hadn't been out. One day she I I was treating her, and she stopped drinking, and all her attendants were kind of hopeful because they had something who someone who could understand their dilemma too. And uh, so she was, one day I walked in and she said, look, Mark, I can walk. So she was on a walker. And she said one thing that was so important. She said, you know, I'm becoming people hungry now, not hungry for alcohol. So there's so many things that we can do and learn from each other about helping the people who are really in need around us. How many seniors live in your neighborhood and never come in contact with them? They're living up in the whatever floor in the, in the back and there would maybe some contact sometimes with the doormen. The doormen's are conduits too because they can be um, very uh, astute in terms of picking up the needs but they have so much work to do so but we can communicate with each other in our neighborhoods and our communities and uh, maybe build friendship benches uh, 
with people we know, or loved ones, the other ones that have drifted away from us, we lose contact. This is a tech, technical world, and we don't seem to pick up a phone and say, hi, how are you? A phone call is so good. A phone call communicates interest, interest, much more than a text. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? Blah, 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 text, text words. Now, that's okay. It's comforting for some, but it's not the same as having establishing a strong interpersonal communicative world with other people. It's not the same. It's not the same as picking up a phone, calling someone, and saying, how are you? Or I missed you. I haven't, we haven't spoken in a long time. You know what? Some people might not want to do that because they don't want the intimacy. They'd rather have the other intimacy, which is not so intimate. But I think everyone in their heart of hearts wants to be discovered. Like we said in our, we, we frame all our podcasts and therapy for the hard talks. It's joy to be hidden and disaster not to be found. And both are true. We need to help patients hide sometimes. And, but if they're not found and not discovered, they're alone and lost. So they want to be, we want to help them to be authentic and real with us so that they can be authentic and real outside in the world. And through the transference to us and being able to establish a place where there is safety that can say all their feelings and not be shamed, not be thrown out of the office is a wonderful experience. So I hope you can um, like this talk. Uh, and, uh, and if you can like it or not like it, there's a place in where you can put a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And I want you to do either one or the other. Don't sit on the fence because that's, that's a way I can know that the, uh, the therapy videos are making an impact on people, and that helps me. It helps me a lot. So if you, you can um, make a comment, if you have a Gmail account, uh, uh, account, or you can make up a Gmail account, it's very easy, and comment, and I'll put that com comment after review um, on the, on the uh, Therapy for the Heart um, page, uh, web page, Therapy for the Heart, Friends of Therapy for the Heart. And it's right up there. If you go to MarkSell.com and look at psychotherapy videos, the pull-down menu. So again, Tuesdays with Mark. Thanks for listening. And if you don't listen, nothing happens. And what you can t do with the information is that you can carry it forth to other people. Let them, let them know about this channel. And uh, let them know about uh, Therapy for the Heart on, on uh, SoundCloud.com. SoundCloud.com. And... Uh, now it's there, so you can listen and you can watch YouTube and uh, podcasts. So I'm going to say adios for now, and uh, I'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye.